say hi when you jump on. We are finally back in Costa Rica after nearly five months of not being in Costa Rica. <laughs> yes, so grateful guys. It's been yes. a big tour, so much going on, but now so rounding again. Please let us know when you join in, where are you tuning in from, especially if you're watching the replay, we love to hear from you. Yes. We want to share so much today. If you see our eyes going like this, we have three different, three things um, going on, three different right phones going on. So we're just <laughs> saying hi to everyone. Hi on Instagram, both of you guys. Hi on Facebook. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So we're super excited to dive in with you guys today. We actually have a stack of questions from some of our clients that are in some of our different online courses and coaching containers. So we thought it would be really fun to start doing these sessions actually live so that you guys can get a feel for some of the high level questions that are being asked in these containers. And of course, here's some of the answers to them as well. Yes, we'd mm -hmm. love to share that with you. So this is something we usually do in different groups of our yeah. courses, but we decided to do it open so you guys whoever wants to be in here and and get some information and learn something also we we're gonna do it for everyone so just be there with us and uh yeah we're gonna be just reading the questions and answering the best we can and yeah. hopefully we'll all make them make the best out of this amazing so when you guys jump on say hi and let us know where you're tuning in from right now it'll be really beautiful to see who's here and what parts of planet earth we have represented right Yay. here right now like i said we're tuning in from Costa Rica. We're back at the nest, which feels really good. We've been in, I think, seven different countries over the last four and a half months. So it feels really good crazy, to be yes. back. <laughs> so good to be back home and yeah. working deeply on the land, on our project here, the nest. Absolutely. So, so much going on. Amazing. We have Catch Republic. We have France. Hello. Hello. Welcome, guys. We have Australia, San Diego. Where are you guys tuning in from? Greetings from Boston today. Amazing. Beautiful guys. Colombia. Hello from Florida. Nice to have you guys here. Dallas, South Africa, UK, UK. Canada. <laughs> Catching all the screens here. Utah. Utah. Amazing. Myanmar. Yay. Myanmar. Philippines. Oh, interesting. Myanmar, yeah. Philippines. Philippines, yeah. France, UK. Malaysia, South Africa, Canada, Holland, Brazil. 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 Latvia, Germany, Brazil. New York. Hola. Myanmar, Portland. Amazing. Amazing. Dubai. Yay. UK. Yes. <laughs> BC, Canada. Turkey. Right on, guys. We're so here. Nice, guys. Romania. Romania. Yeah, brother. Maldives. Maldives. We were, we were just, just there. there. 15 <laughs> yeah. days working deeply with two spas yeah. there, guys. Italy. It was, it was deep, deep work. Italy. Yeah. Bolivia. Italy again. Nice. South Africa. You guys are amazing. England. Costa Rica. Yes. Iran. Turkey. Okay. <laughs> we'll be here all day shouting countries, so we're going to get started. I have these questions here. So the first questions we're going to go into is a course, um, firstly, that is run by me called the Online Empire Builder, and it's also a part of the Be Your Brand container. So we've run multiple live Be Your Brand events in the past, and Online Empire Builder is the online version of those live events. And so this container is 12 weeks, and it takes you behind the scenes of how to develop, launch, and accelerate your personal brand. So we talk about a lot of things, business, purpose, um, money as well, but a lot around personal branding, okay? So the first question here from Tatiana was, was fantastic with the product spectrums what are the main ingredients of high ticket offers I've got low to medium priced offers under my belt but I'm struggling to create high ticket converting offers thank you so this is a great question and we always teach that whenever you have a business a message a company you want to make sure that you're serving people on all spectrums so you want to make sure you're serving people um, from low-end products all the way through to high ticket right so this question is kind of like how do we nail the high ticket piece because it's not about just going oh let me create the most highest ticket offer that I can think of and throw it out there that's not going to work but what really will work well is tuning in to these elements firstly what is it that your soulmate clients absolutely need and want what is the most premium offering that's most likely going to involve a little bit more of your time and proximity? What is that premium offering that they would absolutely dream of and love? And then what is the value exchange that feels really good around that, which is how you would then start anchoring in the price point. Okay. So do you want to add to that? I mean, those are, those are my core. Yeah. yeah. 
that's, that's, that's the core pieces around tuning into the high ticket offer. And um, for anyone watching, it is really important to make sure you don't have just high ticket or just low ticket or just medium. You want to have a full spectrum and then allow your clients to basically sort themselves and feel into what feels really amazing. Okay. All right. So next question here is um, one more question. Besides being on all social media platforms, are there any other ways to grow your audience? Thank you. Yes, <laughs> there are so many different ways to grow your audience. And in fact, you should be focusing in every single day around different ways that you could grow your audience. Now, it's not like there's five secret things and that's it. You can be doing anything that's in alignment with your purpose that's gonna grow your audience, right? So if you go and you speak at an event, if those people are inspired, they're going to follow you, they're going to join your email list, they're going to want to be around you, right? You could be walking down the road and you walk into a cafe and you end up having a chat to the person across the counter and they hear about your mission and your purpose. You can say, oh yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. You just got one new follower, right? So there's, there's these ways everywhere, right? Right? But I do believe one of the core most powerful ways is showing up daily and having a powerful message and sharing your truth and then asking your audience to interact, asking your audience to share, asking your audience to help spread the word if something was really valuable because they're not just one person. They're connected to an entire network of people, right? Yeah. And remember that if you're coming from a place of purity and realness and you love what you're doing and you're connected to your purpose, you know, people feel this too. Like yeah. it's real. It's it's really tuning into like what is your message? You're not doing it just for the money or just to be famous or just you know, like there needs to be a core underneath, like clear from your heart, raw yeah. and real. That's something you really love, you really wanna serve, you're really here to serve, like it's something that inspires you and fires you up. So when that happens, people share it naturally too. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's a lot, has to do with the energetics. It's something I, I, I feel deeply when I changed and really tuned in to like, this is what I love to teach and share, not because of any other external reason, it's because it's coming from my core. So yes. that first thing is get clear on that. And something that I, I see for both of us have, has helped us a lot also is participating in podcasts, in events, in summits, yeah. in anything you can, like reaching out to people, to friends, to whatever, like doing lives together, going live on Instagram, going live on Facebook, like moving the energy working with collaborations it's time of collaborations guys and we see this a lot people are scared of like oh my god i'm gonna lose my audience because i'm gonna share it with someone else you know and that's a scarcity mentality you're never going to lose an audience the person is gonna go with the one they're resonating to go with but if if, if someone else people also resonate with you they're gonna come and do something with you and vice versa like this is more about energy than like this is mine and I don't share it with anyone else because that's gonna keep you small so small that uh, yeah you're not gonna be able to open up to all the possibilities that you have yeah. available exactly. so it's it's very the energetics on branding mm -hmm. we also work just on energetics the rest is really a result of that Absolutely. So if you guys are in resonance with something, let us know in the comments, hit those love heart buttons. Just say yes. If you're feeling like, oh, okay, yeah, I get this. This is waking up something in me. Let us know that you're here, right? Because this is an energetic exchange. Guys, and just so you know, we're trying this out. We're if trying. you guys love this information yeah. that we're sharing in World we're gonna Please like it. Please, you know, share with people, uh, tag them, you know, show some love so we know that you love this. Because yeah. if not, we'll just do we'll it back, back in the group. We you know, and for us, it's, it's okay. It's the same. Yeah. But, you know, it's for you guys. So please let us know that, like, that you love these questions. And there's a lot going on. We're going to touch on, on, on many different courses exactly. that can help you right now in your life. Okay? So before we go into our next container, which is the Soul Remembrance Method, there's one more um, branding and business question here, which says, Hi guys, I have a live event coming soon. My question is about the next step that I want the tribe to take afterwards. Where do I want to drive their attention towards? I feel I have too many projects coming up, e.g. starting a podcast, offering an online course, or organizing another event. I want to support them in their journey and monetize my business simultaneously. How do I choose? So this is a really beautiful question. And the thing is, there are infinite possibilities around how to do this, right? And it wouldn't be right for me to say like, oh, well, you need to offer an upsell of this because that's the magic upsell. <laughs> it's not going to work, right? Because it's different for everybody. So this answer really needs to come from your soul. It needs to come from you tuning into yourself and your audience and asking, okay, cool tap into the soul of all the people coming through this container 
all the people coming through this life event and then ask them what ask the soul of those people right what is the no-brainer next step that would support them that they would absolutely love and you want to check in and make sure that feels amazing for you because you don't want to be doing that and be like oh i can't think of anything worse than doing an offer like that you want to make sure it's in alignment for your soulmate tribe and it's going to support them in their growth and in alignment for you. And then when you do that, when you make that offer, it's going to feel amazing. You're going to be excited around it and then they're going to be super excited around it and then everyone's going to be like, this is amazing. I want to do that, right? But this is where it doesn't work often because either someone's not tapping into the group or they're not tapping into themselves. Yes. Yeah. And just to add to that, again, the energetics, um, there's too many projects, right, that, that can go on. But as long as you are connected to always giving and serving from a place of the heart too that feels good for you and doing it, you know, as an offering for free yeah. so people can have it. They don't need to pay a cent, you know, and once you also do an offering and people know they, it, it, it's going to go deeper, it's an energetics that you're supporting the whole community. And of course, whoever wants to go deeper will in, happily invest on in that because they already know you, they already feel you, they're with you, they're walking with you and, and they love you. So they, they, it gives them the trust yeah. to go deeper with you, right? So again, always we always work on the energetics, guys. We don't work with strategy. We don't work with like structure like that because it's different every time. All of you are different. Mm -hmm. And that's why you got to tune into what's in your heart in this moment right now. What's your core? What's your essence, you know? Yeah. Once you figure that out, or at least you start figuring it out because, you know, it's a, it's, it's a journey, then it's so much easier. Everything flows so well. Exactly. Absolutely. So now let's go into some of the questions from our next container, which is the soul remembrance method. So this is another online course that we have. And this really takes people behind the scenes of what does it actually take to live from your soul? in the most empowering way where you wake up every single day and you're deeply connected to your soul and you go to sleep at night knowing that you just lived your day in the most soul aligned way possible. So there's deep layers of work and spiritual work and alchemy um, and, and personal exploration through every area of your life in this container. So the uh, first question, there's a stack of questions here from Florentina. So the question is firstly, how to work with my clients without being emotionally attached to their results and transformation. I've observed you two and you don't seem to have any reaction if there's a hundred people in your life or only two. I feel like I need to have more energy to alchemize um, the group energy. Yes. I think you've kind of answered your own question in the sense yeah. that it's choosing to not be attached. <laughs> yes. Right? We call it passionately <laughs> unattached. Letting go of any expectation. As you're saying, if you have two people on your life or you have a hundred, it doesn't matter. You're doing the life because it's coming from your soul. It's coming from your core. Even if you have to do it because you have to promote a course or whatever, right? It's, it's all good. But tap into the energy of like, I want to share this with the world. And that's what matters. Because if you're doing it for you and something interesting and a topic that you want to talk about and share some of your story, like connect again with your heart, who cares if two people saw it, a hundred saw it? it? That is opening up as a channel of mm -hmm. service, right? You see the difference? The other is a mind. It's a strategy. And that's going to always keep you empty. So that's why it's always important. Again, come to the core. What is the message? Tune into it. Tune into that vibration. And nothing else will matter. For sure. Okay, next question is how to position yourself as an authority, but in the same time, not express the energy of being superior? That's a great question. And I feel this energy and choosing this really just starts within you. You know, people will only perceive you as being superior if you're running an energy of I am superior. And I think it's really important um, that everyone in any sort of leadership position really checks themselves with this and really checks in and is like, okay, Am I being powerful in my message and in my transmission and in my codes and my medicine and my healing and my whatever I'm sharing right now? Um, am I doing this from this place where I'm feeling us all as one and all as equal? Or am I doing this from this outdated guru complex inverted code of I'm better than you because I'm the guru and I'm the teacher. So you shall sure listen to me because I'm superior, right? And again, that is only, you only see that in people if, if, if it's running in you, right? And yeah. so it's just good to check in and no judgment if it has been running within you. 
it's more like checking in and being like, oh yeah, okay, I caught myself in that a little bit. I've taken other people off their pedestals that I've given them. I'm going to take myself off this pedestal that I've given myself and remember that we're all just walking each other home at the end of the day. Exactly. That's so beautiful because if you have people like that, that you're putting on pedestal, like, oh my God, there's that person. and Oh my God, you lose it. You come out of your center because you see the person or they're going live or whatever, you know, looking at those parts of you because you're inferior energetically to that person. But when you have people like students that want to learn from you, then you're going to be superior to them. Right? You're still playing the game. It's yeah. really a game where ego is related. So once you come out of the game, then it's not going to happen. And something that we love that we do all the time is energetically creating a circle. Mm -hmm. So if you're live, of course, the best way to teach is a circle right you see many many times i mean when there's big conferences you can't do it but many times people do like the leader is here and everyone else is in front and that that's like a connotation of difference and there's a level there's a stage sometimes you have to do it when there's thousands of people but many times you don't you can do a circle everyone is at the same level looking at each other's eyes yeah we're all the same we all create and this a vortex of energy so when we teach smaller groups and when we're you know live we with our groups, we always take them to visualize, feel, or know we are in a circle together and there's a fire or there's a, or there's a crystal or there's a connection in the center, a heart that connects us all. Yeah. Once you have that energetically, that difference of, of levels just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It vanishes. For sure. Yeah. Do you want to check this is charging? I, I think it's maybe um, not. I just saw it flash up with the low power mode. So it might not be right <laughs> Hold for technical issues. <laughs> I just saw one of his phones is going to die, maybe. Stay with us. Better? No. Okay, let's just keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay. Fixing. All right. So the next question is how to love my clients, but in the same time, not confuse the type of relationship we have applies both ways. I was living everything through my mission and clients. Now I'm in a detox period. Yeah. So in terms of this, um, this starts with you and finishes with you, right? So people will treat you according to how you choose that you will be treated, right? And so if there's any unhealthy relationships, if there's any codependency, if there's any entanglements or loops, it's on you to look at this and clear this up, right? Because naturally that will dissolve if that is shifted within you, right? So you want to be doing this. Where have I had relationships? Um, where have I had clear boundaries or whatever that looks like, right? And then learn from those and then you can dissolve that pattern within you and within your system so you don't create the reflection of these people showing you, hey, you have this pattern running, right? We don't really have people show up and we, we don't have these codependent relationships, right? Whereas we know a lot of people that do and they're living that out. We don't have that because we had it a lot in the past. And the minute we healed that pattern within us, we didn't need to then manifest another reflection to be like, hey, heal your codependency, <laughs> right? Yes. yes, when you see your clients as your partners, as you would be with someone in an intimate relationship, same. So why are you manifesting the same relationship with different faces, mm -hmm. right? But it's the same, because you haven't shifted it inside. Yeah. So all these things that you're talking about with clients are great questions, we've all been there, but always go to the core, where am I showing up like that, as Rian is saying, because you're definitely attracting that. So I love to get the relationship with like an intimate partner, you know, your wife, your partner, your boyfriend, whatever, however you wanna call them, um, it reflects where you're at right now. They're the best reflection you can have. So same goes with the clients, even though it's not as intimate, but yeah. it's very powerful actually. Sure. Okay, how can I do the spiritual initiations without getting strings from the participants? I don't realize yet how to open myself, but in the same time to be in protection. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, and it comes down to protection, basically. It comes down to protection. Yeah. It comes down again to be aware of your solar plexus, yeah. of your umbilical cord, right? That's where we connect, you know, that's the codependencies mm -hmm. that happen. So always be aware if that happens uh, naturally, it's because you have this pattern running. Same mm -hmm. with a partner, you know, you can 
you can choose to have a free relationship or a codependency relationship. If you're used to having that relationship all the time, it's going to be your normal. So there needs to be a big awareness, big in your life, where you're going to break the pattern, okay? Yeah. But once you break it and you're like, okay, how am I feeling? You just tune in. How am I feeling with this client? What's going on? Energetically, you'll feel if there's any type of string that related to your belly in anywhere, right? And you got to dissolve that string. You got to see it, release them with love and connect it always with the heart. Yeah. With the heart, you're connected with everyone. This is where we relate from people. So you're basically answering the next question. What type of protection should I use? I've tried so many versions and it's not clicking yet um, to last and be safe whilst I'm in the city and do spiritual That's working That's the groups. best protection, guys, yeah. really, is connecting from the heart. You visualize, feel, or know that your connection with any person is from this place of the heart. Everything else dissolves. You just don't let it because the, the heart is way stronger than any other center. Yeah. You know, it's 5,000 stronger the magnetic field of the brain that's so powerful, right? So that's how powerful is the heart. The thing is mm -hmm. we're not aware of the heart. So then naturally you go and connect through your umbilical cord, through your solar plexus, through all these like, you know, the sexuality and the sexual connection and, and all that, which is great. But if the heart is not related, you're lost. You're lost in a loop. That's not, it's not going to take you anywhere. So we invite you to always be in that place of the heart, just being aware of that space and that connection. And of course, you know, you can surround yourself with a, with a bowl of golden light yeah. and, and, and you, you all know these protections you do energetically, right? Mm -hmm. But the heart is the center of it all. Exactly. Yeah. And so this um, ties into this a little bit too. How can I set efficient energetic boundaries with my clients? Well, those boundaries um, start from you. So I would be looking at where have there been a lack of boundaries so you can see that and learn from that. I would then be creating new boundaries and you do this by even just writing them out. Like I no longer tolerate this, this and this. Or now when I'm with people, this will happen. Or I am only willing to do this and say yes to this or da, 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 da. Like get clear on them yourself. Like people that feel like they don't have good boundaries is because they never define the boundaries, <laughs> right? So after you define them, then you commit to that. And then when you hold that as a commitment, that then affects your energetic field. And then you're just a walking vibration of that. And people don't even try and, and like get into those boundaries because it's impossible because you're the embodiment of that boundary. Yeah. Right? So you've got to step it back a little bit and energetics. go through that process. Yeah. It's all energetics. Can you share a ritual that you have in practice when you interact with low vibes, places, and people? Um, so all of the, everything we just told you basically, yeah. right? Everything we mentioned with the protection, et cetera. Um, and then also clearing, you know, clearing you, your body, your mind, your field, all of it is super, super yeah. important. Yeah. I feel the core of every question is awareness. Yeah. It all comes back to awareness because if I go to a low vibrational space or someone is in a low vibe and I allow myself to get uh, influenced by that for some reason, I wasn't aware that someone else was in a lower vibration, so I allowed my energy to get lost. I went out of my center. That is the only reason. You can be in a place. We go to malls, guys. We were just in the Dubai Mall <laughs> or the Emirates Mall. That's like, oh, my God. It's crazy. Mall of Emirates it's... at 5 p.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> oh my, we had to go because we got to get a couple things before coming to Costa Rica. Yeah. And it was the craziest ever. You can't That's imagine really that energy there. And just thousands of people. It, it was crazy. We were fully in our centers, connected, knowing where we're going, breathing, sending love. You see, when you're going to public places, what you do is you're, you're, you're sending love. You're not receiving because there's so many low vibration energies there. But you got to be so aware of what's going on. Like you have a direct connection with the sky, with the stars. You have a direct connection with the earth. And both unite in your heart. And from the heart, you, 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 you share flowers, energy essence however you want to see this or feel this it's of your choice but yeah. it's a beautiful journey of being conscious that you're not being affected by others you're actually affecting others yourself with the highest vibration possible that's yeah. gratitude that's love that's compassion you see but all this comes with awareness if not it's so easy to be taken away especially when it's intimate people that you love like your family yeah. and they're in a bad vibe where they tell you something that like doesn't resonate, you know, is bringing you down, but you allow that to happen. We are the ones that give permission. For sure. 
So the next question here is, how can I be proud of someone or something without coming from my ego and say, I did this or this person achieved this because of me? So I feel this is a very energetic thing because person one can say, I did this fully from their ego, fully from like a place of thinking that it was all them basically, right? And then someone else can say, I did this from a totally different energetic place, actually from a very humble place, you know? So I think it comes down to remembering that even if we achieve something amazing, is it really us or is it also God, the universe, great spirit, the divine synchronicities, all the magic, all the choices, all the other people around you? Like there's so much <laughs> that comes into play. It's, it's just the ego that thinks like, that was all me, right? Yeah. So it's not necessarily what you say or don't say, but it's the energy that you're coming from. Yeah. And if you feel like you're ever in an energy of being in that unhealthy ego, and I say unhealthy ego, because it's not that all ego is bad. We actually need an ego and an identity to be here on this planet. So if we're in this vibration of an unhealthy identity, don't, don't judge yourself, but just check yourself and be like, oh, interesting. I'm kind of in my ego right now. I'm getting like... <laughs> that vibe, right? Yep. And then shift it and recalibrate it and learn from it. That I mean, I feel that's the entire human experience summed that's up. It. <laughs> that's it. And every time you also, because because we're so attached to the ego in the negative side, right? But every time you also achieve something and, and you're like, oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. Just look at that. And it's like, oh, thank you. Oh, I allowed that to happen through me. Yeah. You remind, you train yourself. We call it the soul gym, right? The soul gym, you go every day to lift weights. What are the weights to get strong from your soul? Being aware. Yeah. Being aware. So that's like being aware like, oh, I did an amazing talk. I did an amazing course. I helped someone. Was it me or was it through me? Mm. Right? And once you train yourself on that, then when that happens, you just give thanks. You give thanks to the universe, God, the infinite energy, however you want to call this cosmic pulsation that's happening through you. Yeah. Right. And this next question ties into this. How can I teach people without involving my structures in the process and open the information gate for them straight from my source? So basically what you were just talking yeah. about. So it's like getting the personal stories and the personal structures out of the way and tapping into the information that's looking to come through you from the yeah. universe, from God. Right. Um, and this takes practice. It takes practice. It's like people don't go from one day to the other, like being a fully crystalline clear channel versus not a day before, you know? Yeah. It's seeing when you're not, it's doing the work, it's clearing, it's alchemizing, it's seeing these parts of your lower self and your ego, it's upgrading them, it's yeah. it's choosing to open more. It's everything in the Soul Remembrance course about, you know, expanding and opening your channel and going into that at deeper layers. You have all the tools to do that. So it's really practicing and going deeper into it. That's it, guys. The Soul Gym, again. And that's the beauty like you commit to be the best version of yourself you commit to live from your soul then you gotta go to the soul gym you you you, you commit to have a good body and be healthy you gotta go to the gym you gotta exercise it's the only way you're not gonna just do it by sitting down and watching tv the same yeah. thing is with this you just going there like a feather that's taken by the wind one place to the other of course, life is just going to take you wherever, right? But if you are aware of like, no, I choose not to go there. What am I doing? I choose not to react. I choose to be in my center. Like you're always aware, like you become so strong. It's a resilience that you build from your, from your soul, from your soul. And, and this is what we teach in the Soul Remembrance, guys. This is a course that we teach on like how to live from your soul. Like it's a whole like 16 week Core, super deep with so much information, exercises, soul work that we give them. Because it's not something that, you know, you, you just do, you wake up and, and you have three steps and you do it. You know, it, it's, it's a whole, it, we're complicated beings, you know. There's so many layers yeah. of our beings. But once you understand how you're made, how you're built, how's the ego, all the different bodies mm -hmm. that are, all the different energies, the meridians, the chakras. Once you understand the magnificent being that you are. Then you can navigate. It's easier to navigate, but it, it, it requires, you know, commitment and and and, and also information. Yeah, for to sure. Do that. For sure. So this question is from Nil, and she says some advice to not be so influenced by people around us, by what they say to us, and being able to keep our center and alignment. Beautiful question. I love that you're going deeper into this. Um, I feel this comes from living even deeper from your soul at yeah. the end of the day. You know. And again, it's similar to what I said earlier, noticing when you're not in your center, 
noticing when you're pulled out of it, noticing when you're feeding off something external instead of, you know, really being in this powerful embodied place and instead listening because people will come and other energies will come. And if, if you're so reliant on the external, they're not always nurturing your higher self either. Like they will come and try and get into your field and manipulate you and pull you down and stop you from rising. Yeah. And if you're hooked in to constantly being pulled this way, that way and influenced by everyone else, you lose that center. So notice when that happens, don't judge yourself, but instead be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I was totally pulled out of my center by this and bring it back and you yeah. learn from it. And then you get better and better and better at staying in this place. So someone external comes and goes, and I go, and you go, actually I'm in my center. Let me, I can check in on that, but that's not really feeling like that's for me right now. Right. And you become, you become the soul warrior. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when you come out of the center, right, you give thanks yeah. because that person is being your greatest teacher. We usually run away from those mm -hmm. people. And of course you got to put boundaries, right? If you're still not strong, you don't want to be always around people that bring you out of your center because you're still not strong. But little dosages here and there is great because that's what makes you resilient makes you strong makes you be more aware it would be so easy you know to uh, live with just someone that you get along so well and it's all comfortable or living alone in a cave you know they say oh that's the hardest thing like no after a while and you get used to it and you get you're okay nobody's triggering you there's no one around you know living the solo life once you get with reflections, with mirrors, in community, with your partner, with friends, with clients, with just people around you, your family, those are the gifts that help you see where you're at, yeah. right? And thanks to that, you can keep growing and evolving and ascending. Yeah, exactly. So one more question here from Anayao. How knowing if when there is resistance, it is because there is a real potential of upgrade and evolution and our ego tries to keep us in the comfort zone or when it is because it is not aligned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Yeah. So this is this is um, something Wampa taught me actually that I love that's so simple and practical. If you're not sure and you feel like, is it resistance? Is it not aligned? Is it resistance? Is it not? Like feel into the scenario and the situation. So an example he used is, you know, we were very early on, we were kind of just stepping into the container of our relationship. He'd just finished running like a five week, right? Retreat. And I was like, come to Bali for my retreat. And every no, 40 day, <laughs> it was huge. Yeah, it was five weeks, is it? No, no, wait, okay, whatever. Two yeah, months, okay. Two months, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But no, it's important for the story. <laughs> okay, so he, I've lost my thing. What was I saying? You were, you were teaching for ages, right? Yeah. Right. And then I was in Bali and I, I was like, okay, you should come to Bali. And he was totally exhausted and everything in his mind was full of Dead. resistance. And it, like, he was like, oh no, I can't. And so what he did is his, he fell into it and he imagined or even started packing his suitcase. Like, okay, I'm going to Bali. Okay. I'm going to put the clothes in the bag. I'm going to do the bag up. I'm going to imagine myself walking out the door. I'm now going to get on the plane. I'm going to Bali. How does it feel? And the whole time he was doing it, his soul was like, yes, 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 yes. Even yeah. though the physical body was exhausted and tired. Yeah. Right now, if he'd done that and he'd be, imagining himself going on that journey and the whole thing was like, ah, no, then maybe it wasn't in alignment. But look, it was in alignment. He got to Bali, even though he was physically tired. And that literally, that's when our relationship started. Yeah. And it might not have, if no. he, <laughs> if he hadn't have come. Yeah. Yeah. And not from a place of, of being scared or, or losing her or whatever, but it was again a place from the soul and I was like oh my god I'll just see her in 15 days I need some time to rest I was demolished guys it was it was so deep you know and and uh, it was a total yes like as Vigan is saying I would put everything on the bag like it was like a week ahead still and I was like putting everything on the bag and then I would open the door and how would I feel tuned into because we all have a gut feeling you know but we've never been in that place of alignment with that gut feeling but you teach yourself to listen to your gut what feels right right and even though it's ridiculous like what am i doing with a bag going to bali when i'm not going to bali you know but practice anything you're doing practice it in your mind and then you're like okay no it feels yes it feels good in my gut yeah right so i called her is like okay babe i'm coming all the way and uh, and uh, and i'm coming early like i felt the right day to go and it was perfect because we had a couple of days before she started her team retreat which was amazing and i went there to support that too and 
yeah, it was incredible, but my mind and my body said, no, you're crazy, you can't do that. Yeah. My soul said yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have one more container to step into. Let us know if you guys are enjoying this and let us know as well. Um, if you've just jumped on, you know, we usually do these Q and A's once a month with our clients in our private client groups, but we felt to answer the questions publicly. Um, so if you want us to keep doing it this way, just type in a yes, let us know. And uh, we, we're just testing it out. So if you guys we love it. We would love to hear from you guys. We'll keep doing it. And if, if you're not bothered by it and you don't want to watch content like this, then we'll just do it in the client groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. It, yeah. This is for you guys. So for us, yeah, just makes sharing no difference with to you, us. if you, you know, just write a yes. If it, this feels good, we're really like just trying it out, yeah. you know, because we have to do it anyway. So it can be for, for the group of people that are doing the courses yeah. or it can be in general because I know we say so much that you know we even help ourselves when we talk about this right yeah. because you, we talk about it or listen to Regan listen listens to me we help each other it's a reminder right so if, if you feel this is a reminder for you and it can help you in your life just write a yes yeah. so we know that you want this to happen more and more and uh, we'll do it here okay amazing all right so we have one more container um, to go into today, which is some questions from our quantum healing certification. So for those of you who are not familiar with our quantum healing certification, this is a very intensive 16 week training where we teach you our most powerful quantum healing method. And this method started when Wampa and I came together and we had all of my energetic tools and upgrades and all of Wampa's energetic tools and upgrade pieces. And we started actually working with people one-on-one -on -one and we would do these sessions and completely transform someone's life and they'd get crazy results. And people would say like, what is this? And we didn't even have a name for it. We were just like, oh, it's our work combined. <laughs> <laughs> it's our session. We didn't even have a name. And then we started realizing like, okay, we should name our session. So we named it Quantum Healing, right? And then sure enough, people started coming and saying like, can you teach us how to do this? And at first we were like, I don't even know how to teach you how to do this because there's so much to it and there's such deep layers it seems crazy to even try and figure out how to explain all of this um but we did <laughs> and it's 16 weeks and it's super deep and so these questions here are from Cherie um as a part of this container okay so Cherie's asking do you have any of your favorite quantum healing modalities. Which ones are your favorite, basically? I'm not sure how I'm going to remember all the modalities, but I guess um, trust and practice are key. So trust and practice are key, yeah. for sure, and you will remember them all. When you're in a session and you're connected to your intuitive healer, they'll come through you. And you'll, you'll find yourself, you might even be then going into a modality and then in the moment you might be like, oh, what's this modality called again? But you'll access it because you would have practiced it so much and gone so deep with it. Um, so yes, trust and practice are absolutely key. And what else was I gonna say on this? Um, oh, that's right. Something which can help you is um, when you are at the end of quantum healing and, and you're all certified and everything, what you guys can do is just write out all the modalities just to have a bullet point, little little note even with you. And so, and you're in a session, you can be like, ah, oh, DNA activation. Oh yeah, okay, this piece here. Oh cool, I'm gonna upgrade this template. Oh, I'm gonna go into the inner child quantum healing, right? And so you, you kind of have it and it can spring your, like jog your memory and then you'll, you'll access them all. Exactly. Um, in terms of our favorite modalities, I don't think so. I mean, we love all of them so deeply. And this is quantum healing level one, so we also have others that we love even beyond this. But I think we love just all of it working together as a whole yeah, system. And, and what we love, and this is for life, guys, is when you tune into the right thing. What's right in the moment yeah. for yourself or for the person. That's what we love. Right? When you're doing something just from the mind, like, oh, I have to react like this or I need to answer like that because if not, you know, it's a, it's a place of scarcity or fear, it's a very low vibration, mm -hmm. right? Once you do it from the heart, and it can be whatever you're teaching, right? We do it in quantum healing. It's super clear. There's many modalities, but you tune into it and, and, and it just flows. It's like, okay, this person needs this. And sometimes I don't even know why, but this is what feels right. And boom, the person mm -hmm. has a blast, right? In quantum flow, we do the same, right, guys? You go into intuition and you listen and you go and open up and everything opens up. It all works in the same way, but 
observing you're not coming from the mind of something you've learned and you're doing it as a robot yeah. right repeating it with no soul with no heart that's when nothing tastes good right but once you like tune into it it's like oh no actually this person just needs to breathe right now it's not even a modality they just need to be present with me right now and be available because there's an energy coming through for them that if i get them into a process or a modality will actually take them away from the energy that's coming through you see what i mean like mm -hmm. There's not the mind thing that gets in the way. It's pure like God feeling. And again, this is the soul gym. You train yourself to be there, to yeah. live your life from that space. That's what we love. That's what we love. <laughs> so one last question here. Um, and so this is in reference to in quantum healing, we teach people through the healing process to insert certain templates and crystals into people's field in order to assist them with greater healing and also upgrading into a higher version of themselves. So the question is, when we're inserting these templates or crystals into people's fields, like in the quantum health activation, how do we imagine or visualize this? Are you placing the crystals in your mind's eye on their physical body? I guess I'm unsure of what the field is exactly. Yes. So the field is the energetic field around them that is basically the house for all of the patterns of information that is stored there, right? And so I invite you, Sheree, just to tune into your own field and then you'll have better context of someone else's field. So just tune in, you can close your eyes and, and ask your guides to show you where is my field and you'll be able to actually feel the limits and the boundaries of your field up and down to the side and it changes a little bit day by day considering like where your energetic field is how much light you're holding how expensive it is if you're tired there's many different things which play into this right so you can actually feel um this so to answer your question it's not necessarily that you're inserting them on the physical body you're inserting them on the energetic field and allow your own intuitive healer to guide you to exactly where they need to be inserted and placed right and so it's almost like the way i like to think of it is like on a computer with a mouse where you click drag and drop it's like that it's that simple so you basically access the crystal or the template you grab it you move it and you drop it where you want it to go in the field now you can do that physically with your hands you'll see us doing this a lot with our hands with our feathers with our tools we're working and we're being very like precise with that you can also you also don't need to you can also totally do it through your mind's eye if that feels more precise for you, then you can do it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it becomes, again, natural. Mm -hmm. Again, tuning into the energy, guys, it's our natural state. What happens is nobody taught us that. So it's all very material. It's all very 3D. But once you practice, once you go into it, once you do it once and again and again, even though you don't see or you, you don't have that like visualization or you, you, it's not easy for you to go within you got to train yourself mm -hmm. again, right? Same is the field, the energetic field, as Regan is saying, you can tune into it and see, you know, and you can tune into it when you're with certain people. Does it expand? Does it contract? You know, when you're in certain places, when you go to nature, yeah. when you're alone, when you're in a place where there's too much Wi-Fi and it's like too much distortion of the energies, like you're so aware of it and that's how you take care of yourself. Yeah. Same as when you feel with your body, it's like, oh my God, I need to rest. I need to have a nap. Like, I don't care. I need to do all those things. But my priority right now, I won't function if I don't have a nap or if I don't meet right now. I, like yeah. my body's asking, it needs some nourishment, right? What, what does it need? Okay, some fruit or some protein. Or, you know, you learn to listen to that. Mm -hmm. Same thing is with the energetic field. And yeah. it becomes like being hungry and needing some food and tuning into what is the food that you need. It's exactly the same. But again, you got to train yourself. So yes, Sherry, in this, the more you do it, the more it'll be easier for you, the more you'll tune in, then you tune into your field, then you tune into someone else's field. It's super easy because there's no difference. And then you need exactly, you feel exactly what they need, what their soul is asking for, and then how to drag that and bring that. It's like playing a game. It's really yeah. playing like a video game. It's so yeah. easy and simple, guys. But again, they didn't teach that in school. Yeah, they taught so much, <laughs> never taught us the basics. It doesn't matter as well if your vision scope isn't fully open either. If you're yeah. like, oh, I can't see it, that doesn't matter. You can work on that and over time you will see everything, but you can also do it through simply your intention. 
and it can help also let's say the vision scope isn't fully open it can help with your hands to then do that yes. that can give you you know precise points once yes. again yeah yes. it's beautiful it's a beautiful journey yeah so guys those were all of our questions yeah let us know if you like this guys if you're yeah. just tuning in we're sharing a uh, live uh, questions and answers for clients that are in different courses but it's courses that are all aligned with everything we teach yeah. so we wanted to do it live for you guys so you can also receive you know and maybe it can help you whatever you're going through in life because exactly. it's all about life exactly so let us know if you liked it and again if you want us to do this more um when we do it we do it once a month mm -hmm. so we would love to do it on this drop space. a yes below drop a yes yeah. below. and tag yes. anyone that you think would really have value from this and would also love to go through this transmission um, if you just jumped on, we've gone through everything from branding, from living to the soul, from quantum healing. And if there's any of these containers that you'd like more information about, if you're watching this and you're not in any of these containers, just comment below. You can comment below with branding, comment below with soul, comment below with healing, and we'll send you out some more information and you can feel into if you want to go deeper into this and come and join the tribe and the community and uh, go deep into all the actual coursework. You know, we're answering the questions related to all the coursework that everyone is going through. Now, if you guys are on live on Instagram, all these comments are actually gonna disappear when we turn this off in a minute. I don't know why Instagram does this, but it does. So we'll post this live and then you need to come back on the live <laughs> and leave your comment, right? Of branding or soul, of healing, of yes, if you want us to do this again, tagging anyone you want to see this. Um, and then once it's there, it will stay forever. Yes. Um, but for some reason, all the comments that are on live, say bye-bye. <laughs> yes. And guys, before we close, amazing news. Many of you have asked when we're doing a course together. It's happening. We're doing a course live. We're going to go live and do a four-week course mm -hmm. for you guys with everything that we've been applying the last, uh, I would say, five years since we're together on how to be the best version of ourselves, physically, yeah. mentally, emotionally, energetically. Four weeks going super, super deep. We're calling it Superhuman 2.0. Yeah. It's waking up that full potential, all that dormant potential that's inside of us that has helped us mm -hmm. with our bodies, with our minds, with our hearts, with our energy, with our business, 100% with our love, everything. So it's something we want to share with the world. It's going to be live. Yeah. Then you can Online. access it, record it, but it's going to be live together. Of course, you can watch the replay. Uh, we can't wait to share this yeah. with you guys. This is taking you behind the scenes of a lot of the biohacks that we're using. We're yeah. going through lots of layers of all the tools and techniques and rituals and activations and energetic pieces as well as very physical things that you do in the 3D as well. Um, we're getting asked so many questions about this. You know, how do you guys biohack your sleep? How do you do this? How do you do that? What do you do for your health and fitness? Da, 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 da. How what, do you cultivate longevity? What kind of supplements do you use? How are you reversing aging? Like all of this, right? And so we're going to be just taking you behind the curtain on all of this. Um, you won't find this content in any of our other containers. It's, it's really brand new for us to teach, even though we've been living in it for the last five years or so. Um, so yeah, we're really excited. So you can comment below with Superhuman if you'd like the info for that. And we are starting very, very, very soon now that we're back in Costa Rica and we have good solid internet. Yes, <laughs> we are so grateful, guys. Yeah. We're going deep. And this is like the latest that we've, we've learned and applied ourselves. Yeah. So if you want to be like on the latest biohacks and you want to really take yourself to the next level, we invite you to join us. And uh, yeah, have have a, a deep community space together. Absolutely. Yeah, so comment below with superhuman. And remember, the comments interested. go away. So we're gonna post this in a minute, and yeah. you need to if come back. If you're on Instagram, and... <laughs> you gotta come back yeah. and just share whatever you wanna share. Or, you know, put a yes that you want the live streams there because you feel inspired. Any course you wanna do, like we're here for you. All right. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. This has been really nice. Just dropping in with the community and having these epic, deep conversations, very multifaceted conversations of many different layers. So good. So, so good to yeah. feel your support and your presence, guys. And thank you for being here. It feels, yeah. it feels amazing always to tune into your energy and, mm -hmm. and connect. Amazing. Okay, family, we love you so much. We'll get this recording posted right away. And have a beautiful day. Pura vida, familia. I love you guys. Woo. Ciao.